Hello and welcome to my development playthrough of XYZ. I am Seito Joshi and I'm going to pretty much just play through my episode. I'm going to talk a little bit of the, the development of it and also the design philosophy that I had through some of the levels. So if you're making like a level or an episode right now, maybe you would maybe this level might be useful to you, maybe you might be interested in the way I made the levels or or you know or maybe you just want to watch because you just want to hear my voice um, either way you know I hope that if you are watching it for what I'm saying hopefully it is actually you know useful to you and you know the design philosophy is actually good I can't promise that you know it's gonna be good but at least it's free right you know so you know what can you do so right now we're in the hub as you can see, we're in a little toad house. We start off right here by seeing XYZ, and we have this, you know, at night, right? You know, it's like, you know, if Mario just woke up in the middle of the night, and, you know, it's like he can't go back to sleep type atmosphere. Um, something that I've actually, you know, didn't know, but I've actually kind of really enjoyed is making these little atmospheric sceneries. So, you know, I think it actually works really, really well. Especially because, you know, not everything has to always be, you know, level, level, level. Right? Sometimes it's nice to have, you know, these little sections where, you know, there's no music. There's not much going on. You know, you just get to appreciate a little bit of the ambience, which I've actually, I think I really, really like making little ambient sections. And you'll see a couple of them sprinkled out through the episode. Um, oh yeah, so a little bit, a little last note before we start, um, if you haven't played this episode, I do recommend you play it, because, you know, I'm going to be saying spoilers of it. If you do not want to get any spoilers, I'm going to be putting a link in the description of the video. So, you know, you can go out and try it, and then, you know, once you play through the episode, you can come back and, you know, see how everything was made. Okay? So, a couple of things right here when I was making the hub is that if you've already played the episode you would notice that normally there is a little basement out here but i make sure to hide it whenever it's not needed so this only gets unlocked once you beat a level that way you know if the player you know loads in for the first time you know they only have one place to go right you know you don't want to give too many options right now you know you just want them to center to stay focused you know on one objective instead of you know showing them you know this hub with a lot of places to go and you know having the player just walk around in rooms that you know don't serve any purpose yet um i did my best to you know hide a couple of neat secrets around here i think you know a lot of people have already found a couple of them so you know make your hubs a little bit fun right have you know stuff to interact with and let's start the level now i think i've talked enough about the hub begin so right here we have the very first level. Why not ask my friend time? So this level was originally the third level I made throughout the episode. And you know originally I said I really wanted to make like a ghost house level just because you know I just kind of like had the feeling. Um, the inspiration for this level actually just came through the music. Which is actually something that came a lot throughout this whole episode. Originally I started with the music and then I based the level around it, which I don't know how commonly people tend to do that, but maybe give that a try if you tend to have trouble making a couple of levels. Just find a song that you like and then just kind of think about it, you know, like think about it in the context of SMBX and think, you know, if it were the player, you know, jumping around to this music, what do you envision? And this episode was made during Christmas season, and I really liked Carol of the Bells, so I actually really wanted this song. And, you know, I was searching through a couple of, you know, different versions of this song, and eventually I found this one, and I thought, wow, this level would fit really, really well with the ghost house level I was thinking of making. Right, you know, it starts with this little eerie, you know, soft start, and then, you know, the level get the song gets progressively louder. So, you know, I thought like, wow, this fits really, really well. 
So, you know, I started and I made this first screen. So, this was the first screen I made for the level. Why? Um, the problem for me is that I tend to not be very good at drawing and I'm not very good at googling drawings So the biggest problem for me was getting this background I wanted to make the ghost house level, but I wanted to make it outside I wanted to make it like a spooky forest because remember that the player just You know, I just showed the player, you know, go out for a walk, right? So, you know, I wanted Mario, you know, walking through, you know, the scary woods and you know, that was my vision for the level so I was, you know, searching backgrounds and eventually I found this one and I thought, wow, this background is perfect. Like, I really, really want this. Like, you know, I really want, you know, Mario walking through this scary forest. But then there was just one problem and that is that the background didn't actually loop. So I don't know if you noticed above Mario right here. Yeah, I actually just mirrored the image so you don't see any cutoff. But once I started, you know, looping this background, it was like really, really obvious that it was just mirrored. And I just ended up ditching the whole, you know, spooky forest just because I couldn't find a good background for it. But I'm still really happy with this first section. Again, it goes with like the little ambience thing, you know. You have the forest, you know, you have the shrubs in the front, in the foreground, and you know, you have these little purple, these little purple particles in the front just to give it a little bit of a visual touch and then you know we entered the ghost house instead you know since I couldn't use the dark forest background I found this really nice X. Valtteri back One. tile set and background Z. and then just ended up sticking with this although this fact this tile set actually helped me a lot because originally I wanted this level to have some type of time gimmick because you know since I saw these little pendulums, and you know, you have bells and clocks, you know, those things kind of go together. So I thought, hmm, I could try to do something that's, you know, related to time. So, you know, I was thinking like, maybe I could make some type of gimmick where, you know, like you have to fast forward or stop time or those type of things. And, you know, I really liked the idea. So eventually, like the very first idea I had was to make these pendulum platforms, right? You know, it's like the pendulums of these grandfather clocks. And if you listen closely, they even do the little tick-tock so whenever, you know, they do a full swing. And another thing that they do is that they're all synchronized. So, you know, if you just play the level consistently, you should always see the pendulums in the exact same positions. And making these pendulums was actually really tricky. They're a little bit glitchy, they're a little bit janky. But I got them to work and that's, you know, I was pretty much happy with that. X, y. So I was able to, you know, sync the Z, little TikTok X, with y, with the pendulums. So I really, really like the little, that little, you know, audio effect. And I said, hmm, I have X, to like make sure I have these like y, all over the Z, place. Just so, you know, the little TikTok X, in the background makes sense. Y, Z. And, you know, I so started placing a couple of these down. I kind of thought that I really liked the way X, they were synchronized y, because it is just so much easier to, you know, actually try to make setups for this level when when you can always guarantee that the pendulums are going to be in certain positions at certain times, right? So, you know, I can synchronize that these platforms are going to go outside and inside, right? So I kind of ended up just falling in love with the pendulums. I said, you know, there's really no point in trying to make the whole time gimmick above this. So I ended up just, you know, just ditching that. I thought the platforms were good enough. After all, this is the first level, right? You know, why start off the episode with this, you know, really complicated puzzle? When, you know, I can just start off the level just nice and calm. You know, as you can notice, you cannot die in this episode. And, you know, I could just, you know, use the fact that you know, the player is just moving around to try to set some type of atmosphere, which I ended up doing with these XYZ voices, right? As you go on, you hear it X, Y, Z constantly, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, X, trying to get the person who's y, playing thinking like, Z. you know, like, what's going on right here? You know, what is XYZ? Is, does XYZ even have a meaning? Like, you know, like, you know, I'm trying to get them interested. I'm trying to get them to actually have a reason to play through these you know, series of levels because, you know, after this level, the story, you know, just kind of disappears. But, you know, I kind of wanted to have that little theme going on. 
And that leads me to another thing, which how to make the levels feel a little bit tight since after all each level just does its own thing. So I ended up deciding that I had the XYZ voices constantly playing through all of the levels just so to remind the player, you know, what they're playing about, right? We're here to play, we're here to figure out what XYZ is, right? You know, we're playing these levels for a reason, not just to, you know, beat them because otherwise, you know, what's the point, right? You know, I can just hold right or I can, you know, just skip it. I can just go to the, you know, what's the point of playing an episode? Right, that's something very, very important. So I kind of wanted to, you know, keep that motivation of, you know, what is XYZ? Why? And you know, Z. just use that voice in the background to constantly remind them. Um, I want to go back because there's a couple of other things I want to talk about this level. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this level as you can see. Um, so this level is called Why Not Ask My Friend Time? Because you know, the whole thing is you know, it's like, ooh, you know, why not ask time to figure out what XYZ is? The level doesn't really have much of a meaning. Just you know, I just I just really wanted to start off with, you know, the whole setting of questioning, you know, like what is XYZ? And you know, this gimmick is supposed to be time, so I just kinda said So I just kinda eventually started coming up with phrases to try to figure out what to call this level and then I eventually settled down with why not ask my friend time. Which you know I, I think it fits fairly well. So now this section, you know, what is this section supposed to be? I, have, I think I have a little bit of explaining to you on what's supposed to be happening here. Um, originally, like, my vision was that as the more the player plays through the level, the background was supposed to, like, deteriorate and, you know, have the little vortex, you know, swallow the background. But as I said before, I'm not really a good drawer, so, so I've, I didn't really find a way to implement that effect, which made me really, really sad. So instead I kind of ended up just doing this, which looks a little bit awkward, but it's the best I could do. You know, even though it's just a flat PNG, just, you know, just statically there. You know, that, you know, I, I, that's pretty much the best I can do. So just imagine that, you know, the vortex is, you know, radiating and, you know, moving around and having cool visual effects. Just do that for me because I, I wasn't able to figure out how to do it. But yeah, so you know, right here, you know, the background is supposed, the vortex is supposed to be time and you know, we have Mario asking, you know, what is time, but you know, he doesn't answer, so it's like, what is, you know, what is, so, you know, it's like, oh, who can answer me now if time can't answer me? Begin. So right here we have the second level and, you know, this is pretty much the last you will actually see of the story, that dialogue. And then, yeah, everything from here is pretty much just a level pack just combine it to an episode so right here this level is called abnormality um, as you can see the gimmick is the little projectiles and once the projectiles are in this background they don't hurt you so you know you have to use this to your advantage um, so the mechanic for this the, the idea came from two different things the biggest one was from this game called Hue. It was free on Epic a while ago. And I think I played it during the Christmas seasons. And you know, the game had this whole color mechanic. And I thought it was really neat and I wanted to see if I could somehow incorporate something similar but into SMBX. Um, the second idea where I got this level was um, from the user called Waddle. Right now he's working on his very own episode and he was showing, you know, this level where he had the uh, this mechanic, this gimmick of the fireball spinning. And, you know, you have to like, you know, do tight platforming around them. And I, I really like the way he designs. And, you know, I, I, and, you know it's kind of like what led me to finalize the idea for this level. You know, just have the fireballs and, you know, just mix in the color mechanics. And then, you know, just from there see what I can do. Um, the next thing that's, you know, going on with this level is this whole Checkpoint. screen transitioning, right? You know, you have the rooms and as you go on the room transitions. That's something that I actually, like, from the very start wanted to do for this level. Um, just because, you know, I kind of like this whole, like, you know, challenge, 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 you know, one screen to the next. And, you know, in SMBX 38.8, that's a little bit tricky to do just because we don't have control over the camera. So I wanted to see... 
I wanted to like challenge myself and see, you know, could it be possible to, oops, I died, to implement that effect here. Start. And you know, I took a lot of work, but eventually I got it to work. And you know, it was definitely like really tricky to get it to work just perfectly. But, but yeah, if you ever want to, you know, make a level like this, feel free to, you know, just grab, you know, all of the codes for this level and just, you know, make your very own room, room type level Check just because point. I think it's it's really it's much easier to design like this so XY. yeah as you can see it's just you know from now on it's just me you know just going from room to room just trying to play with you know the tight platforming and you know having to you know wait for the colors to match for the player to you know continue and then, you know you just beat the room you get the checkpoint Check you go point. to the next room and then, you know you start the new challenge um, I'm pretty happy with this level, even X, though, you know, y, the speedrun for Z. this game... In the speedrun for this game, this level is really, really rough. Checkpoint. But, you know, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with it. Checkpoint. A quick little thing about this level also X, is that you may notice y, that you can't actually Z. run. And you may be thinking like, you know, why can't I run? You know, what a weird thing to do. And the reason I did that is just because as I was making this, you know, all of these setups, I found that overall running, like, was a bad idea. Like, in general, like, all of these setups, they're much easier to X, beat if you just y, don't run. Z. And, you know, I was thinking, like, how can I just get, you know, oops. And, you know, that's a little bit tricky just because generally, you know, when you play SMBX, you know, you just hold the run button and, you know, you just press forward. Especially since this is the second level. I was thinking like, how can I get the player to, you know, understand that, you know, sometimes walking X, might be a little y, bit of a better decision. Z. And the truth is I wasn't really able to find a good way to actually have the player just not run naturally. So I ended up just disabling myself, right? You can't run and, you know, I think that makes the level playing, that makes playing the level a little bit simpler, even though again, again. it's a little bit more annoying on the speed run, but... When you're playing the level for the first time, I think it makes it a little bit simpler wow. since, you know, the, all of the timings are based around the player just running. Um, so right here we're going to the next room. Originally this was gonna be the last room by the way. Oops, and I died. Um, originally this was gonna be the last room, but Begin. I wanted to have a really neat visual effect for the ending. So I had to like extend it a little bit more just so I can have the player fall into the level exit so the whole purpose of this room is just to get the player to you know climb upwards uh, so let's go here and let's see what other things do i want to talk about this level before leaving um oh yeah since i didn't want the player to run i ended up googling those bookshelves in the back and then you know just saying like oh you can't run in the library and you know just you know just calling it you know just calling it a day yeah that's enough of a reason for the player not to run and there we go, that's the whole level. Is there any other thing I want to talk about? Uh, I guess the name, Abnormality, it's just... I just... The song is called Glitch, because again, I got the song first, then the level. And then I just took Abnormality as like a synonym for Glitch. And that was pretty much it. Not the most creative name. So right now we're going to the third level. And something that maybe you might have not noticed until now is that... These set of coins were actually the first set of coins you saw throughout the whole episode. Oops, and I died. X, um, y, as you've noticed, Z. there's no HUD in this. Start. And there's also no health. And there's also no power point. And no power point, no power ups. Right, you play through the whole episode, it's just small Mario. And I did that very on purpose, mainly X, because y, I think designing an episode is much easier whenever you remove all of those things. Mainly because you can exactly predict what the player is going to do when you offer a setup. So like for example in this setup right here, right, a Mario player and a Peach player would do something completely different, right? Peach would float and Mario would spin jump. And you know, if maybe if Mario had like the, you know, the super leaf or some other power up like the hammers, you know, they could basically beat this, you know, confront this challenge in many different ways which some people might see that as a good thing but if you're the designer 
you have to think about every single way the player can approach any single part of your level. And for me, I just find it much easier if I just remove them and I just leave the player a small Mario. Right, because now I can exactly predict, you know, how the player is going to... Oops, and I died. How the player is going to challenge... How the player is going to, you know, go through every single section. Right, there's only one way to solve these and that's pretty much it. So let's go through here. Okay, there we go. So let's go down here. So how did I come up with, you know, the idea for this level? Um, this level was originally gonna be really, really different. Originally, this I wanted to make an auto scroller. I wanted to see if I could challenge myself and see if I can make an auto scroller in a different but interesting way. And eventually, after a couple of tries, I ended up just not finding a good way. Originally, what I was gonna do is have the player be riding an airship. So you know. It's kind of like an auto scroller in a way, because you know you're limiting, you're limited to, you know, just the airship, and you know the airship would just move automatically by itself forward, and you know I was gonna have like projectiles running in, and, you know you were gonna have to avoid them and all of this, but after a while I just ended up thinking like this whole level is just gonna be you know just projectile spamming, and I couldn't really think of many good ways to make the level interesting, so. I pretty much just gave up on the whole auto scrolling. Oops, and I died. I don't know why I did that. Um, I ended up giving up on the Go. auto scroll thing and just made a different level in its entirety. Um, as you can see again, we have the thing where I'm originally I chose the song first. Um, actually, no, on this one I didn't choose the song first. I wanted to do the auto scroller. So I chose this song, which is called. Um, I think it's called I Will Follow Him because you know you were supposed to follow the airship and all this. But you know now that the now that I changed the mechanic, right, it doesn't make too much sense, but oh well. Same thing with the title, right? Stick with me. You know the the level title was supposed to be because it was an auto scroller, you know, you were supposed to be keeping up with the ship, but I guess now it's just a little bit of a random X. name. Why? So Z. once I gave up on the auto scroller idea I had to think like what else can I do? And I just kind of wanted to do a level just about the spin jump. Right, so this level, there's a lot of just spin jumping in here. And I think it shows really well with the custom NPC of this level, the Bony Beetle. Z. Um, I ended up just repurposing its behavior so it works a little bit different as you saw right now. The Bony Beetle, first you have to spin jump it. And then you have to jump on it. And... Basically, I wanted to see if I could make a level with that because I think it's a pretty good enough mechanic. Also, I think I might have just killed myself. Uh, mainly because I made sure I had... Let me just restart X. this. I made sure I had full control Z. on the times that Go. the player jumps and the player spin jumps. I can show you an example right here. So I used the wall jumps to pretty much detect... Well, I used the wall jumps to pretty much force the player to not be in a spin jump. Begin. So for example, let's say that the player tries to spin jump, and then they wall jump, Why? right, it takes out the wall Z. jump. So I can guarantee that in this section right here, I'm just gonna restart again. Um, in this section right here, I guarantee again. that the player is jumping. So no matter what, if the player is here, I know that they're jumping. So I know that right now the pony bills are inaccessible. So now we have to go back, so I use the switch. So now again, the only way to cross this is by spin jumping, so I can guarantee that, you know, right here, the player is going to have to spin jump back. And then we hit the switch. And then again, in order to go through this, you have to do it through a wall jump. So I can guarantee that whenever the player goes back for the third time right here, that he's now in the jump mode. So I tried to, you know, use the whole wall jumping to my advantage so I can control whenever the player is supposed to jump. So for example, you hear you wall jump to go back to your regular jumping. And you know, you need to jump in order to do this final leap from the bony beetle to this ledge. If you do the spin jump, it's just not high enough. X, Y, Z. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much what I had for this level. I also made the Rhino, just for fun, just because I thought it fit really well with the aesthetics of this level. Um, I just kind of made this run section just because I like, well, I died. Just because I kind of like having little runs times every once no. in a while. 
so let me just replay through this back. And you know, I kind of wanted to have a little bit of an epic finish to this level. It really doesn't serve much of a purpose, and you know, some might say that it might be better without this section, but I just really wanted it. And I died in the last place, of course. I'm not the best at playing and, and talking, so I apologize. I, I promise that I'm a little bit better at SMBX than you know what you're seeing right now. Um, so let's just finish this level. I think I talked enough for this level already. So let's just jump, 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 and done. Also, I'm really happy with this little rhino effect at the end. I'm really proud. I thought it fit really well. Begin. Okay, so here we are at the fourth level. One wave, two wave, red wave, blue wave. Um, again, I go back with the whole ambience thing. X, I really like having y, these little ambient Z. sections. So as you can see, there's no music. I just put some sound of waves. And you know, we're in this little like beach cliff area. You know, we have a little bit of water. You know, you can just kind of swim around here. And you know, we have this little nice cliff into the view of the ocean. I really like making little ambient sections. I think it, personally for me, I think it makes the levels, levels feel a little bit more memorable. It makes it a little bit feel more, a little bit more cozy. Yeah, that's the word, cozy. I like this little nice effect of just having this little, you know, like, toy area where you know you're just gonna save here before the level actually starts X, y, Z. so now the origins of this level so or I wanted originally I wanted to have a beach level or like some type of like beach ocean level and as I said I first chose the music for like most of these levels X, so I ended up thinking y, like you know ocean Z. beach and you know this this song is definitely probably like one of the weird ones out there just because it's a spongebob song because you know spongebob ocean but i think it but i think it ended up fitting pretty well even though it's again it's a little bit of a weird choice but i i think i managed to pull it through through a little bit so whenever you're choosing music right don't be afraid to choose you know songs that are you know, not the typical conventional, right? Because people tend to think like, oh, you know, if I'm making a level, I have to choose video game music, right? But nah, it, it, sometimes you can, you know, just choose X, other music y, and, you know, just go with it. Because I think so far right now, the only level we've seen that has actual video game music is, is Abnormality, right? That The song there is from Fez. Every other one, it's it's not video game music. So let's, let's just get on with the level. So originally this level was gonna be a little bit different. The way I envisioned it is that you're gonna be on a flying submarine and the fishes were gonna like pop out of the water and you know you have to like shoot them down. So it was gonna be like a shooter type level. And there was only one problem with that and because I wasn't really too sure how to do checkpoints. Because you know it you know we have to rely on the player originally jumping into the submarine for it to work. And I wasn't too sure, like, you know, if they respawn mid-level, how would I transition that effectively? You know, how would I have a nice transition for the player just starting in a submarine? X, y, Z. And I really couldn't think of a way, so I ended up just reworking the level. And instead, I just kind of ended up turning into a mini-game. Mainly because I didn't want the player to die in this level, because, again, no checkpoints. And, you know, I, I like to have not waste the people's time, so... I always like having checkpoints everywhere. So I said, if this level is not gonna have any checkpoints, then the players cannot die in this level. Why? And I thought, well, Z. if the player cannot die, then I can probably just transform this into, you know, a little bit of a bonus. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more. So here's a couple of the things that I did to make this level feel very bonusy. The first one is by having the score the combo. You know, they're pretty much useless because I don't think anyone's out there is, you know, going to be comparing like, Ooh, what score did you get on this level? What's your top score, right? But, you know, just having it there, I think it gives this level have a much more vibe of a little mini game instead of an actual level. And, you know, also toy around with it. I played a lot with the sound effects. So, you know, you can see whenever you jump on the fish, the pitch of the sound effect gets, gets higher and, you know, you have more particles each time running in from the ocean. Which I cannot show you anymore, but... Um, actually, there's a couple of other things I want to talk. Um, Begin. Um, for the previous level. Um, a couple of other things that I did to try to make the level feel much more minigame was... 
the little fireworks um, you're gonna have to like rewind the video to see them but whenever you jump on a fish you know little fireworks sparks up you know a bunch of their bees falls from the ocean the background color changes so I tried to go for this very abstract you know mini game and hopefully it worked out well you know it's in the very middle of the game so I like to think of it more of a bonus level than an actual level but okay let's go with the next one existential crisis X. So if you've been around the SMBX community, you've probably seen this level before or you've probably seen the aesthetics of this level before mainly because this level was actually a was originally from a level contest that I had submitted a while ago and this level is actually the reason why I even started working on this episode to begin with I just really wanted to like rework this level just because I'm really proud of the whole aesthetics of this level. So I said, you know what, I just kind of like want to redo the level, just make it a little bit better because there's a couple of areas that I didn't like in the original level. And yeah, after making this level I said, you know what, I want to make more levels and then I got the idea of making an episode. So a couple of changes I did is that for one, I made sure to actually, you know, utilize these little Goomba platforms, which in the original level they were like barely even utilized. Um, and then the second change I did was to actually, you know, use these arrow lifts because the original idea behind the level was supposed to be the arrow lifts. That was like the original like gimmick, but I barely even used it throughout the original level. So I thought, you know, how can I say that this level is about the arrow lift if it even barely uses the arrow lifts? So, you know, this time I actually, you know, pull through and, you know, make the level B of the arrow lift. And, you know, this section I think it's almost unchanged from the original level. I just did a couple of changes to the jellyfish. Mainly because, you know, this was like the one section in the original level that actually used the arrow lift. But I'm also really proud of this little setup. I think, it, you know, it's, it's really neat. Or at least I think it's really neat. So let's go back. And collect the checkpoint. And let's see what else is there in here. Yeah, so whenever you're making a level, make sure you don't get too out of focus on what the whole idea of the level is supposed to be, right? If you say this I want this level to be very, you know, action-y, make sure the level actually, you know, stays with the whole action genre. And because a lot of the times, or at least when I make levels, it's very easy to, you know, forget what the level is actually supposed to be about. And, you know, I think that's a problem I had when I first made the original version of this level. Also, another of these little run sections, as I said, like, I kind of just having these little run sections, like, in stick with me. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, make sure you stay in focus. And that's pretty much it. I think this level, for the most part, is very self-explanatory. Just, just ride the arrow lift, avoid the platforms. You know, don't get hurt. And that's about it. X, Y, Z. You know, I think its main attraction is the aesthetics. Begin. Okay. So now, hell is a spot in paradise. For me, this is actually my favorite level in the whole episode. Um. This level wasn't actually originally gonna be made. I didn't have any plans for this. This level was really improvised. Um, where I got this gimmick was actually again from Code House. Someone had posted a screenshot, you know, featuring their level, and you know, this level had the SMB upside down SMB two threes in them. And I think Angel posted, you know, a little emoji of the upside down tree, calling oh them sin. And I thought, you know, like. How can you refer to, you know, the upside down trees as sin, right? You know, they're like an SMBX staple. So, you know, I said, you know, I have to make a level around these. So, you know, I, I you know, I started brainstorming and thinking, you know, like, how can I make a level be based around these? So, my first idea was to make a maze level. You know, so you can see, you can see the background that there's a whole maze aesthetic. And you know, again, going with the whole little ambience thing, right? You know, we have this little calm music in the background, and you know, try to, you know, give this whole thing the vibe of a temple, or at least the best I could do. And then right here, we introduce the gimmick. Yeah, the supers running in, and you know, powering the trees to, you know, do an action. 
Yeah. Um, it took me a while to think about how I was gonna do this. Originally, instead of the super, it was gonna be the little SMB2 ladybug. But I found it really annoying to synchronize those things, so I ended up just thinking I need some enemy that just you know shoots forward, and you know I can activate multiple trees as it goes along the way. And you know eventually, I really like the super, just because you know it it has a really funny trajectory. And yeah, originally this level you were gonna be traveling through the maze, and you know avoiding you know the trees all over the place. You know there are gonna be supers all over. You know. Going around and it was gonna be like this chaos. Um, but then, as I was making this level, I ended up playing um, a game called Super Hot. Um, I took a lot of inspiration of that game when making this, and you know I kind of like the idea of Super Hot, where you know you just kind of go from level to level, challenge to challenge, and you know instead I just you know gave up on the whole maze thing, and you know just you know made into what the level actually is and you can see the super hot inspiration right here right that's you know something you know in super hot where you know you'll hear that sound effect and you know the text will appear on screen um so yeah i made this little challenge room um again if you're curious on how if you ever want to make a challenge room like that you'll feel free to use the code for this level and just and you know just make something like this the way it works is actually using warps so every time this the little the little um circle transition happens oh let me avoid this um it it X, it makes the screen y, black Z. i teleport a warp to the player which teleports the player to the middle center and you know casts out all their momentum all their speeds and i just use that so i can always get like a clean slate every time so no matter what you always start at the center you know in the same spot every time and you know, you just go from challenge to challenge, and then I use layers to, you know, show the trees and show all the supers. So, you know, layer height, new layer show. And then, yeah, I just said, I'll just make, I'll just make rooms and see where it goes. Um, so in here, you know, I tried to do a couple of things, like for example, in here you have to jump on the green super, otherwise the room becomes unbeatable. And pretty much, yeah, I just started thinking, you know, what are setups for... One. For this level, Z. and I said I'll probably make like around 20 rooms, and you know, coincidentally, ended up just making 20 rooms. Um, because this level gave me um, bullet hell type of vibes, I ended up choosing a music from just shapes and beats. Oh, let me not die here. As you can see, shh, shh. yeah, you know, you see that if you play this level without dying, Z. Um, it's actually synchronized, so the song ends. Right as you beat the level, so you know I'm pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, I ended up just going with a song from Just Shapes and Beats. It's called, I think it's called Barracuda. It, it has that little, you know, Egyptian vibe, so oh. I thought it felt really well with the whole temple desert thing. Okay, so now the next level, Denvar's Ambition. Um, so again, this this is not a case of. This is another case of, you know, I chose the song first, made the level later. Um, and I think, you know, doing the whole thing of choosing the song work, the song first, is actually really helpful, especially for me. Mainly because the music affects a lot of the ambience of the level, right? It changes how, it changes how, it does, has a huge effect on the mood. So, you know, the song being able to just listen to the song first and then just try to visualize, you know, if this were an SMBX level, how would it work? I think this helped me a lot when making the episode, so... If you ever struggle with something like that, as I said, don't be afraid to use music that isn't, you know, video game music. You know, feel free to use any song that you just like and you just think, you know, how can I picture a level using this music? So let's grab this checkpoint and let's go down here. Um, so yeah, this level has a very, like, I don't know how to call it, this little moody feeling. So, I ended up choosing this background and this color team just because of that. I thought, oh, and I died, of course. Um, Go. yeah, I tried my best to make the aesthetics just kind of like match the song. And again, the background is just a Google background. 
Just like with the first level, the one asked my friend time. The background is also mirrored. I don't know if you can notice right here at the very center. Yeah, you can see it probably right now. Yeah, the background is just mirrored because it didn't loop and it wasn't 800 pixels wide. So I had to make it larger. And since I'm not good at drawing, this was the best I could do. So let's just continue. Oh, here's also something else I want to mention. Again, this whole episode very rarely has coins since, you know, there's isn't a real use for the coins. Since again, no HUD, um, no lives, no one-ups. So in this level, what I did is that I used the coins in order to let the player know where they're supposed to be going. Since, you know, this gimmick is a little bit of a, it's really tricky, right? It's very puzzly. And I didn't really, oh, oh, I messed up. Um, I didn't really want the player having to do too many attempts when playing this level. Oh, I also lost right here. Um, so let me just restart. I didn't want the player having to, you know, no. constantly trial and error this level out. So I pretty much just used the coins, you know, just to tell the player, oh, you're supposed to go here. You know, oh, right here, you're supposed to, you know, jump through these enemies. And then right here, when you're jumping, the coins appear, so it's like, ooh, make sure that, you know, you jump on that platform, and you know, if you fail, you die. Um, making this level Stop. was really tricky, just because I'm not very good at making puzzle levels. Um, this level can be cheesed really, really hard. Like, you can beat this level under a minute very easily if you know how to cheese this level. But of course, you know, if, you're, if it's the first time playing this, you know, you're probably just gonna follow the coins and just... X, Y, Just, you know, just Z. not really think about it too hard. Which is also something very important to think about when you're actually, you know, making your levels. Remember that more than likely, if you make an episode, the player's only gonna play it once. So make sure that, you know, that first experience time is go. really good. Because otherwise, X. you know, they're not gonna go back and replay the levels. So if you tell yourself like, oh, once the player gets it, it gets good, you know, that's not a good mentality, right? You want to make sure it's it's good the first try. So right here we're on the final level. M is for Mario. Um, originally this was gonna be a boss fight. Um, one thing that I personally wanted to do is make a boss fight where the player actually Z. fights the boss because typically Z. a lot of people in SMBX Z. associate Z. boss fight with just a little bit of a survival Z. round, right? Um, I'm gonna stick on this screen for a while. So typically a lot of people just associate with, you know, oh, there's just gonna be a boss, we're just gonna spam projectiles, spam enemies, or not spam, right? Just show projectiles, show enemies. And then, you know, if the player survives long enough, then, you know, they beat the boss fight, right? Pretty much. And I wanted to make a boss fight that wasn't that. I wanted to make a boss fight where you know you actually fight the boss. Um, but the problem is I just couldn't figure it out, and you know that kind of became a problem. So I actually had this whole like boss fight planned out, and it's still a little bit in the game if you mess with the code. But I ended up just canceling it just because I didn't really like where the boss fight was going. So I said, you know what, I'll just make this a cutscene. And, you know, I wanted to tie back with the whole XYZ thing. And, you know, just kind of have a little bit of a conclusion to it. And that was pretty much it. If you replay this level, this level actually changes. We're gonna go back. I wanted to basically make it show like, ooh, this is a you beat XYZ, right? XYZ is no more. Especially since throughout the whole episode, you heard the voices play out. So once you beat this level, the XYZ sounds no longer play out, which is something that you will only notice if you ever replay it. So I thought it would be like a nice little like easter egg for the people that do bother to replay the episode. So uh, right here we have some custom credits. And you know, I wanted to, you know, make the credits also be a little bit fun. So what I did is that, you know, you go through each level and you know, it's like, you know, each level in a single screen. Um, also, you cannot die in here, so, you know, don't worry too much about that. So, just collect the coins. And, you know, you can see right here, everything. Um, everything is also in, like, a very 
you know, I wanted to go for a little bit of an empty type of thing. So as you can see, there's no background. You know, it's just Mario with this music, just, you know, just remembering every single level. So it's like, oh, remember when you played this level, right? Um, here's also the fastest fishing minigame I've ever made. You know, press run. And if you press run on the sound effect, you get a fish. Isn't that cool? Um, so yeah, another thing that's also like very, I think, impactful on this episode is that there aren't many levels in this episode. And that is very on purpose, right? Whenever you have make an episode with a small amount of levels, it makes it, ugh, it makes it much easier to make each level memorable. Right, compared to, you know, making an episode with like 60 levels, right? If you have an episode with 60 levels, each level just kind of like, you know, it rounds in this crowd of a lot of levels. So having an episode with smaller amount of level makes it much easier to make each level memorable and make each level unique. Um, also, you know, just fun if you, you know, if you were to speed running the credits, just, you know, since you don't get hurt, you can always do that. Um, so yeah, I really do like, personally, I will always be an advocate of smaller episodes, right? Don't push yourself to make 60, 60 level episodes, you know, that's, you know, hours and hours long. Um, especially, you know, for something like this, I think it works much better if you make something smaller. It's, it makes it much more likely for people to complete it. And it makes it, I think, overall much more unique. So let's go back here. I want to show a couple of other stuff. Um, this hub is also very, very dynamic. If you ever, you know, quit midway, this hub, the, the hub actually changes. It's supposed to progress from like night to dawn. So if you remember from the beginning, like it was very night. You could barely see around you. But right now it's dawn, you know, now that you beat XYZ. So like you can actually see the whole thing. Um, again, going with the basement, this only unlocks once you beat the first level, so, you know, this would be the f new. And then from here, you can, you know, play every level. And because I wanted to make this level very speedrun friendly, you know, you can see the minimum amount of this, your best time, and for this case, you know, your, hot, your high score with the best combo. So I want to go back to the first level really quickly. Begin. Um, again, going back, once you beat XYZ, since, you know, you beat it. The XYZ voices will be gone, so as you can see, no more XYZ, right? Yep, all the voices are gone, so that's a little bit of an easter egg I wanted to include. Another thing, because once you beat the episode, the overall, the passive voices, the ones that would just randomly say X, Y, Z, and all the levels, they're also gone. And one last thing is the last level begin right um, this level actually changes a little bit it still takes the same amount of time to complete but the only difference is that again you already beat XYZ so it's gone no more so you know the voices are gone so I just left the visual effect replaced them with the heartbeat effect and yeah I, you know I think this is a much cooler way to do it instead of instead of having a boss fight I think this is a little bit neater, but you know, it's more of an easter egg since you know, more a lot of people are probably not likely to notice this since you know, it will, since I doubt that many people are gonna be replaying it. And yeah, that's I think pretty much most of what I have to say for XYZ. Um, if you made it this far, um, thank you for you know, <laughs> watching through the entire thing. Oh look, we have the single slope that I promised right here. Or maybe I lied, maybe there are more than one slopes. Who knows? Only, you know, someone with a keen eye would know this. Um, but yeah, overall this level was... This episode was pretty fun to make. I, from the very start, I told myself it was gonna be very short. It was gonna be something quick that I could do in like a month. And you know, I worked on this throughout the winter break little by little. And yeah, you know, I really wanted to have an episode out there. Um, I wanted to make sure it was unique, which, you know, I kind of want to talk about where I got the whole XYZ theme from, level from. 
Um, originally, XYZ was a placeholder. It wasn't meant to be the actual episode name. And I got the whole XYZ from, strangely enough, Google. Google's parent company, their website is called abc.xyz. And you know, Google, I think, is the one that started the whole XYZ domain name for websites. And you know, I thought, you know, XYZ just sounds catchy enough. So I would go around the 38A Discord and just spam XYZ just for fun. Mainly also just to hype the episode a little bit, you know, just to, you know, give a little bit of hints. And then Fire Nova DM me asking me like, hey, what is XYZ supposed to be? And that's where I realized that, hum, I don't really have an answer. I don't know what XYZ is. Because, you know, originally I didn't have... I didn't have the whole XYZ voices planned out. It was just gonna be a level pack. So I was thinking like, hmm, what if I make the episode answer what XYZ is supposed to be? And you know, I ended up just rolling with that. It was it was definitely a little bit of an improvisation, but I, I'm actually pretty glad that Fire Nova DM me because otherwise this episode would have been really, really different. And yeah. The only other thing I can say is, I guess, G is for Google, and thanks for watching. And also, I would like to give a huge shout out because there's actually a another secret that I haven't shown you guys in this video, and I'm not gonna show it to you. Um, there were four people that were able to, you know, went a little bit of the extra step and found some extra stuff that, you know, wasn't originally, you know, directly presented to you. And you know, I decided to call them the Zero X Zero A list. And you know, that consisted of Void, Fire Nova, their Eric, and Yoshi Superstar. You know, those four people were able to find a couple of really neat secrets that are hidden in this episode. Especially Void and Fire Nova, they were able to crack down the ultimate puzzle and find the ultimate secret. If you're interested, you know, check the forum post, There's, the solutions are already there. Um, there's custom cheats in this episode, so for example, if I type, uh, what can I type? If I type super, super, right, so I implement a custom cheat system, so I hit a lot of secrets here, and you know, I was thinking, and the reason I did that is just because, again, this level was, this episode was very, you know, just new for fun, and I thought, you know, what could be fun than just plan out the whole, you know, super secret puzzle. And yeah, I'm, I have a, there's a secret theme going on in this episode, which, you know, you wouldn't know this unless if, you know, think about it really hard, but there's more than just XYZ. But yeah, thank you for watching. I think this video is almost like an hour long, maybe. Um, hopefully you found it interesting, or maybe you even found it useful, just me just rambling around. Um, I don't think I have anything more to say than, you know, just whenever you're making your episode on your levels, just make sure you have fun and that it is fun. And that's it. Goodbye.